All right, so, so I, I'll move the test to Friday next week. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, I Didn't think you guys would argue too much about it. All right, let's uh, let's see how much I can get through. I know the cool kids are here. That's okay. All right, so I. I hope to get through problems one through four, and then we'll call it good on page 87. Deal? We good? All right. So all I'm doing is one through four, and then we'll go over the rest of it on uh, Wednesday, I guess, next week. All right. So a random sample of 25 cheeseburgers. 25 cheeseburgers. I like cheeseburgers. Ordered at specific fast food restaurants. Averaged. Average 820 calories. Cheeseburgers. With a standard deviation of 35. Okay. We wish to use a confidence interval to evaluate this data. All right. So item number one, which test do I use because I only have 25 cheeseburgers? Which which uh, do I use a normal distribution or a T distribution? Yeah, I use a T distribution because I have less than 30. All right. All right. So, hey, so if I'm using 25 cheeseburgers, what would my degrees of freedom be? Twenty-four, good. It's one. It's always one less. You good with that? All right. So let's uh, join our Desmos family. Desmos. And you can just type in T distribution or T dist, and then it's going to say enter degrees of freedom, and we said it was going to be twenty-four, right? So that is my T distribution. Yes, it looks like a normal distribution, but that's what the T distribution does. It approaches a normal distribution. All right, so that's kind of the first thing. Then we want to use, it says calculate the critical value. The critical value with a 90% confidence interval. So what is halfway to 100? How much? If I go from 90, what's halfway to 100? 95. 95. So 95%, so that's 0.95. Good so far? All right. All right, so find the critical value of a 90% critical interview, uh, interval. So, so I got to find it because I can never remember what it types out to exactly. Functions, uh, inverse CDF, I believe it's called. Inverse CDF, and I'm going to plug in 0.95. Okay, my halfway to 100 of my confidence interval. Good so far. So it looks like we have a 1.71. So my critical value is 1.71. Calculate the margin of error. So this is my critical value, CV. Or actually, I'm sorry, I goofed up. This is now my T star because I'm going to find my margin of error. My margin of error will be T star times my standard deviation over the square root of my N. So I'm going to go 1.71 times... times a uh, standard deviation 35 over square root of 25 
All right, so that's basically my calculator back to didn't. All right. So that's going to be 1.71 times was it 35 35 over square root of 25 which is obviously square root of 25 you just plug 5 in. So I'm going to get 11.97 so this gives me 11.97. Okay? So that means this. That means this. So my mar my margin of error is going to be 820 calories plus or minus 11.97. So that's going to give me uh, 8... Eight twenty minus eleven ninety seven. Eight twenty minus eleven ninety seven. So eight oh eight point three and eight twenty plus eleven point nine seven. So eight oh eight oh three. So eight oh eight. Oh three. Point oh three to eight thirty one ninety seven. All right, so let's calculate the confidence interval. This is my confidence interval. Confidence interval. Okay. Interpret the meaning of this co confidence interval. So if we were to sample randomly. 25 cheeseburgers from these particular place, we would expect our calories with, uh, we have a 90%, we are 90% confident that if we selected 25 cheeseburgers at random from this facility, that those cheeseburgers would have a range of 808.03 calories to 831.97 calories. Okay? So, again, we use the... So, here's a quick question. Can I use the T-distribution if I had above 30? No. No, you actually could, and this is why. So, if I... If I did a normal distribution, so my t-distribution here, usually t-distribution should be less than 30. But if I did a normal distribution from 0, 1, oh, sorry, 0, 1, notice they are very, let me get a little darker, they are very similar graphs. So the, the higher this value gets, so like, Let's say I had 300, 300 items I sampled, which is a normal distribution. Degrees of freedom on 300 is 299. And notice when you do 299, do you see any of the black graph below the red graph? So the T distribution is a way that you can create a normal distribution, but you're using the T table when, you're about, when you have a select value that is less than 30, okay? If you made your T-distribution and it was a, a big sample, you are almost exactly to a normal distribution. I mean, it would, it would take an awful lot to justify where, where this graph is one way or the other, okay? So let's see if I can do that. So black, red, black, red, they're the same. Does it get, does it make sense? It's the same graph. And the reason that takes place, oh, now I have an area under the curve, kind of cool. So, my friends, I said I wanted to get through one through four. You allowed me to get through one through four. So I will uh, finish off page 87 and 88 on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we will do um, the last unit which is 510, which ties into um, the uh, 
the normal NT distributions. And then on Friday next week, we will have our test. I will tell you your entire test is multiple choice. So the answer is there. Okay. I, I would have preferred to do it the other way, but sorry, it's all multiple choice. That's what Anderson put out. Okay. Yeah. And then he and I compare it. And he's like, oh, look. Assuming your class is a normal distribution of my classes are, I did better than you. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, so my kids get half their points back. So once they all come and do that, then my kids all did better than you. Ha, ha, ha. Just kidding. It's not, not quite that geeky. So it's in the middle.